So now that we've covered the life cycle of angiosperms, I think it's worth noting and sort of looking at a basic summary of angiosperms before we move further with the diversity of angiosperms. So we'll entitle this next flowchart Angiosperm Summary just so that we know the basic facts to remember about angiosperms and then the details you can sort of fill in on your own when we actually when you actually go through the flowcharts in more uh, detail and in greater depth as you're studying. So the basic summary is the following. Angiosperms possess a structure known as the ovary, right? The ovary is a female part of the angiosperm that eventually has structures within it that develop into the fruit. And that's all I'm going to say here. The ovary develops into the fruit. A fruit is a characteristic part of the angiosperm, specifically in maintaining the seed, nourishing the seed, and allowing for seed dispersal, successful seed dispersal. All of those facts have been covered in great detail in the past flowcharts. This is the basic summary. Ovary turns into fruit. Okay. In addition, within the ovary, there's a structure known as the ovule. The ovule, simply put, eventually develops into the seed. Angiosperms, that root of sperm, means seed. And so the seed origin of these plants is from the ovule. The seed itself contains structures within it known as the embryo. So that's going to be that diploid part. It's going to contain an endosperm, that tissue that originally was from that triploid cell that was part of the double fertilization. Both of these are the end results of double fertilization. And also a very tough, very protective outside layer known as a seed coat that prevents something known as desiccation. The seed will not dry out, let's say, if it's in an arid, dry environment that does not have any water. The seed coat will make sure that all water within it is maintained uh, so long as we have a decent amount of time and dormancy that's going to eventually lead to germination. So that's our ovule story. Ovule turns into seed. Seed contains three major parts. Know them, know their origination, and how they came to be. In addition, angiosperms are very good at this following characteristic. They are good at the fact that their seeds are going to disperse. So their seeds disperse. That's a critical part of their success. They are the most successful land plants for that reason. And when these seeds disperse, they will tend to germinate. They will tend to grow and develop only in favorable conditions. Conditions that have water, conditions that have nutrients within the soil. Those conditions are going to harbor their life and continue uh, and allow them to grow successfully. So that's the basic idea. How do they disperse? Well, that's through animals, through wind. They attract pollinators, the flowers are bright colors, all those things that we talked about are going to be critical adaptations for these angiosperm to successfully have seed dispersal and then eventually successfully have germination of those seeds. Finally, last thing in the summary, we're just going to state that during germination, which is that growing process of this seed, during germination, the seed coat actually ruptures. Okay, So this, that protective layer is going to rupture. It's going to break open, in other words. When the seed coat ruptures, something known as a seedling, a small plant, emerges. When this seedling emerges, it's going to be able to grow successfully, so long as the environment and the conditions around it are favorable. Now, that successful growth is directly tied to the fact that the seedling uses uh, very important stored food, and that stored food is going to be within that original seed structure. Specifically, the two parts are the endosperm. Remember, it has that starch and other nutrients, that triploid part. So it's going to have food that's going to allow the seedling to continue to grow. And also, the cotyledon structure is also going to be incredibly important in allowing the stored food to uh, emerge and al uh, allowing the stored food to help out the seedling in terms of its emergence and growth. Finally, last point about this emergence of the seedling is that with food, when you have this energy, you have the capability of doing photosynthesis. That's something we actually haven't mentioned in great detail when we're talking about all of these plants, but we know that photosynthesis is a critical part of all plant growth. Plants cannot grow without photosynthesis, and they cannot do photosynthesis without this original seedling food source that is provided by the endosperm, by the cotyledons, that all encompasses in successful photosynthesis, which then in turn leads to successful cell respiration, which overall gives us a nice, 
growing healthy angiosperm plant. And that's our basic summary of angiosperms. We'll conclude our look at uh, plant diversity to this lecture overall by finishing with some angiosperm diversity.